Hola soldiers, Coach Donna J here, the bossless boomer, and welcome to Savvy Soldier. Hey, I hear that many of you are just like me, somebody that wants to move abroad. And I'm going to assume that there have been some challenges. And so today I want to share my five challenges that I had to overcome in my endeavor to move abroad. I refer to them as the BFFs or the big five Fs. But before I share that with you, welcome anybody that's new to the channel. And I want to thank my subscribers for getting me to over a hundred subscribers. Yay! I really appreciate your support. Now, what we talk about on this channel is I share my initial uh, decision to travel abroad to get my TEFL certification. Once I received that certification, I decided I just want to stay in Mexico. So I share that information on this channel. I also talk about the health benefits of travel. Some of you just need to take your life off of perpetual pause and push the reset button on life. Some of you just need to take time to be still, feel, and heal. So we talk about how you can do that on this channel. And finally, I talk to baby boomers and late bloomers about the importance of creating a slide hustle because I do not believe that pensions or social security are going to be enough to allow us to live the truly live the type of lifestyle that we want to live. So I'm going to leave some information in the links, um, but if that sounds interesting to you, if that sounds like something that resonates with you, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way when I upload new videos, you'll be like the first to know. And it doesn't cost you anything. It's free. Subscription is free. And finally, leave a comment. Okay, so let me talk about my big five Fs or what I call my BFFs. Those things that kind of got in the way or slowed the process down or maybe something that you're experiencing as well. So the big, the one, the first F is fallacies. And fallacies by definition is just, it's just information that's not factual. It's, uh, it's, it's information that's misleading or false. I call it fake news. And I'll give you an example. The first thing that I started hearing, especially from my family, when I was getting ready to move abroad or to take this trip um, was, well, what if, what if you get kidnapped by the cartels? <sighs> Look, are, the, is the, is, are there cartels? Yeah, that's a fact. But the fallacy is that they would have anything or any need to recruit a 60-year-old black American, female. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure I don't fit the profile for being a part of that of that organization or that that stuff. You know, no more than I am a part of the mafia wherever they are here on this side of the border. You know, it's it's just it's irrelevant. Uh, it's nothing that I need to worry about. So fallacies was like the one of the big Fs that I had to overcome before, you know, moving abroad. So I you're not part of that group. Why why would I be part of that group? Come on people. Fallacies. The second F is fear, fatal energy aborting rest. And it wasn't fear on my part. It was actually fear on out from outside forces, you know, things that they were afraid of. Well, I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. What is, what is my power? The, the ability and the authority to reach the desired outcomes that I want in my life. And love cast out fear. You know what I'm saying? Love cast out fear. So, and then uh, to have a sound mind, you, you you have to change your mindset concerning some things. I love the scripture that talks about think on these things. Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good report. If it be if it, if there be any virtue or anything praiseworthy, think on these things. You bring about what you think about. And so you have to be in the mindset of this is a good thing and I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm moving in power, love, and sound mind. I'm not going to be operating out of fear. What is there to fear other than fear itself? No way. I'm not doing that. The 
the uh the, so that we talked about fallacies, we talked about fear. My third F is friends. Friends. How many of us have them? Friends. Friends you can depend on, and I hope you have some friends. Friends can be a helpful thing. They're 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 a good part of your life. I've categorized uh, friends um, in five different areas. So there is that true friend that sticks closer than a kin, okay? And my true friend is Dora. She was the one who checked on me while I was here in Mexico. She was the one that called. She was the one that, you know, and initially she was a little nervous and she shared that and I shared information to help her be a little more comfortable with it. And then she became my support system while I'm in, while I was in Mexico and she was still here in the U.S. So you do want that type of friend. Second friend is a reliable friend. Now I call Joyce my reliable friend. She is like a refreshment. I mean, just refreshing. She's refreshing. When I'm in her company, it's just a refreshing atmosphere. It's like a cool water on a, sol a smoldering day. So you want that individual in your life. A third type of friend is you want that faithful friend. And a faithful friend can have wounds, but cause wounds in your life. But they're not the bad type of wounds. They're not the things that hurt you and, and keep you from moving forward. My friend who, will, this is the friend that, you know, if you bring something stupid and all out in left field, this friend is now going to co-sign on something that is, is totally out of character for you. So my friend Tamara is that friend for me. I call her my faithful friend. If I'm going to be over in left field, she is going to put information out there for me that's relevant, that's true, that's factual for me to take a look at and then move from there. Not to stifle me just to make sure that I'm doing it with, with clear head and, and everything is in order. Then we have my friend Donna, and that's like iron sharpening iron. She's a business partner, and I've known Donna for over 25 years. And when we get together, there's like a mastermind that happens, and we're able to help each other grow in our business endeavors. So you want that type of friend. And then there's the fifth friend, and this is... This is the Rashida and Stephanie duo. Stephanie talks about everybody needs a Rashida in their life. And I have a Sonia in my life. And, and what the importance of that is, is that when two of you all are co-laboring together, if one falls, there's that friend to help you get back up and get back on track and continue moving forward. Now, there are some individuals that you may loosely call friends that I refer to as acquaintances, but they're not really friends at all. They're just in your social network. And they, those individuals can have a negative impact on you. So you have to be mindful of that and you have to regulate that thing. And the other thing to remember is that you're not asking them for permission. You have made the decision that you're going to do this. So those friends that are supportive, keep them close. Those individuals that are not supportive, serve them an eviction notice and keep it moving. All right. The fourth F that I want to talk to you about is family. Family, love them, love them to pieces, but sometimes they can be a hindrance to you moving forward in things that you have decided to do. Oftentimes, I think that they're their uh, focus is off. It's they're focusing on their own personal needs and not the desires that you have. And so, so there can be some friction there. There can be some anxiety. And I believe some of the anxiety is a result of unanswered questions that they maybe have. So why are you doing this? So when are you going and when are you coming back? And so if you can help kind of resolve some of that for them, maybe they're Maybe their agitation, maybe maybe their anxiety will be lessened. Then there's motives. You know, you've got your own ideas of what it is you want to do. And then sometimes their motives for sharing information with you about why, what you should or should not be doing is, is, is off. It's, it's tainted by their selfish desires. So motives is a thing. Irrational fears, we talked about that. Um, there's some that genuinely love you right? And so let them know that the fact that you're moving abroad 
does not mean that you're going to love them any less or that the reason you're leaving is because you don't love them anymore. But, you know, love, focus on the fact that there is that love, there is that concern, and, and you know, there's ways that you can stay connected. I mean, we, we can FaceTime each other, we can Skype each other, you know, you can get on a plane and fly down to visit me, you know, especially if you really love me. But love me enough to let me do what it is that I want to do and don't interfere with that thing. And then there is you as a part of your family. Sometimes it's you that's getting in the way of, of moving forward. So I, I tell people to do this um, when, when family or friends are uh, putting all of this negativity out in the, the atmosphere concerning things that you're getting ready to do, whether it's, you know, and take a new job or move abroad or whatever the case may be. You be careful not to always ask blind people to proofread your vision. Some of them just not going to get it. So why why keep asking blind people to proofread your vision? Just saying. All right? So those are my uh, the first four Fs. We talked about fallacies. We talked about fear. We talked about friends. We talked about family. The fifth F in my BFF is finances. Something that I had to overcome something that you may have to overcome. If you're going around asking or saying, I don't have enough money, I would pose the question, do you have enough money to live here? You're saying you don't have enough money to move abroad, but look at those numbers. How is it serving you here? Are you struggling? Are you, are, I mean, are you robbing Peter to pay Paul? Are you behind in your bills? As And, and I'm not... I'm not I'm not knocking that, but I'm, I'm asking you to check your mindset and ask the same question. Would If I were in another country, would I be able to live off of this money that I have? Now, I'm not a financial advisor, but I know that Picky Girl Travels the World and Sonia, who has a YouTube called Mind and Mana, both of those individuals have background in, in, in knowledge concerning finances. I would encourage you to reach out to those individuals, especially if you are serious about getting your finances in order so that you can either move abroad, do a scouting sabbatical or an extended vacay, whatever the case may be. If you're serious about doing that and, and your money is funny, reach out to those individuals and see what resources they have available for you to help you. I hope that this has been um, valuable to you. Um, I'm going to leave some links in the description. In closing, I want to encourage baby boomers and late bloomers, don't wait till the last minute to get that slide hustle up and running like a well-oiled machine. You know, there's a scripture that talks about you should have seven to eight streams of income. That's not talking about seven to eight jobs. But we don't, well, we already see what's coming up on the land. We don't know what other risks are ahead of us, but you need to have some finances that are coming in, some things you want running on autopilot where you're making money while you sleep. Uh, connect with myself or other individuals in our uh, community to figure out what it is that you can do to help get you to that place. All right? It's been a wonderful time. I've enjoyed this conversation with you. Um, like I said, I'll leave information in the in the description on how you connect con can connect with me. I'd love to do a 15-minute discovery call with you. It is absolutely free, no strings attached. And until next time, be well, live free, and prosper. <laughs>